Stephanie Shelton here, CEO and founder of Nair's House. We are a faith-based, grassroots, culturally sensitive alternative to traditional mental health services. We provide non-traditional mental health services to black women in underserved communities. So grateful to, uh, to have you here. So glad that you uh, to join with us this evening. Our topic is doing it afraid, taking charge of your mental health. And we are going to have Darlene A. Anderson to, uh, <laughs> to join us uh, this evening. And um, Darlene is a personal and professional development consultant. So we are going to be talking about how developing yourself both professionally and personally my fingers are so big i'll be hitting the wrong thing uh how the development of your personal and professional self how that ties into uh mental health you know we are going to make that um connection this evening and you know, just to remind everyone that, that on October 7th, Naya's House will be hosting their second interactive workshop, Movement is Medicine, the next chapter. And we will be highlighting, focusing on and exploring journaling, storytelling, and movement. Tickets are available available on Eventbrite. The link is in my bio. And if you're anything like me, just feel free to DM me and I'll help you out with that. I'll walk you through the process. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't always get all that um, stuff correct either. So you can DM me and I will walk you through the process. And if you need a payment plan, let me know. Let me know. We we go, we're going to work it out so that everybody gets the opportunity to attend. That That is what I want to happen. I want every woman who is at all able to, and if it's at all possible, to be able to um, come and join and, you know, join in with this workshop. So I am going to pin the topic now so that as people are joining in they will know what it is that we are talking about doing it afraid taking charge of your mental health i want to welcome um everyone who has uh joined in thus far Thank you for sharing um, the time and space. There we go. All right, so um, like I said, Darlene A. Anderson is um, joining us this evening. She is going to bring information and perspective related to developing your personal and professional self and how that ties in with uh, mental health. Um, you can find Darlene on IG at Darlene A. Anderson. Darlene is also on YouTube and she'll give you the information for all of the many other things that she's doing. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Darlene. Thank you again for saying yes. And we look forward to this exchange and this level of communication that is going to be yes, happening. Yes, yes ma'am. Well, good evening, everybody. <laughs> good evening. I want to give a special acknowledgement to my sister, Stephanie Sheldon. Did I say it right? 
Tell yeah, them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a running joke. I've known Stephanie for years, and mm -hmm. she's going to let you know it's a D, not a T. <laughs> so, sis, I just want to say I'm so very proud of you. It it's is a, a T? It's a yeah. T. So, look, and then it's, it's just my New York <laughs> accent. Because I'm like, then it's 10. It's 10. You see, all these years, I still can't get it right. I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> but I want to congratulate you on your mm -hmm. platform. This is amazing. You just really went running and you inspire so many people. So I thank you for allowing me to be a part of your mission, what God has placed in mm -hmm. your heart to bring forth to others. So thank you. Thank you. On today, I just hope that we can have a conversation. And in between that, definitely discuss some mental health, personal and professional development. As you stated, uh, my name is Darlene A. Anderson. I am an independent contractor. I will also say for those out here that are interested in learning more about self-direction under the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities, you can check out my website and I'll provide more information there. It's really important. And the reason why I spoke about that, because it's not just about me, it's about community. And I am a Brooklynite, I'm a New Yorker, and the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities, they're doing a lot of great work for people with disabilities. But the thing about it is a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of black, brown, it's not limited to black and brown, but a lot of our black and brown individuals in these inner city communities are not taking advantage of it. So I encourage you to learn more about self-direction under the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities, where I am an independent contractor. Mm -hmm. So that is, <laughs> that is one of the things that I love to do, my community work. What I am very passionate about is personal and professional development. And it goes back to just pretty much who am I, uh, an African-American female born and raised in East New York, Brooklyn, of a mother and father that were amazing and did the best that they can. But in that, a lot of things happened in our home that were technically behind closed doors that we're not supposed to talk about. And those things actually played a part and my development throughout the years. And as I got older, those things I really started to unravel mentally, physically, emotionally, socially, to get a better understanding about the makeups of me so I could be better for me, for my daughter, and for the community that I serve. So on today, I'm sure we'll talk a lot about that. Stephanie and I uh, have spoken last week about just some of the things that doing things afraid, like what that looks like, conquering your fears, your mental illness, so I'm excited about tapping into that today. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Okay, yes. so let's start with the personal development. How does mm -hmm. personal development tie into mental health? And because you are a consultant, yes. how, how do you walk a person through that process? Like, what are the steps? What can individuals look for what would be the benefit of them connecting with you because that's what this is about this is about one sister helping another sister exactly so we are talking about what it is that i do what it is that you do and how can we benefit from checking in with you how are you going to assist us in our personal development and what does that look like paired up with mental health Great question. I would have to say it starts back because the new thing is um, everyone's a life coach. Right? <laughs> Everyone is a personal development coach. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. You can go and you can get certifications for this and you can learn how to ut utilize the techniques to help others. My approach is a little different. I've dealt with people since, and I, I make jokes about this and say since I was two years old. I'm the eldest of four. So mm -hmm. I've been responsible for three individuals from the age of two, then three, and so on, because we're steps. Mm -hmm. I've been working since I was 10 and 11, first assisting my mother with her entrepreneurship, and then working in a local supermarket at around 12 or 13. I was working off of the books. I just want to mm -hmm. say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was working off of the books. So um, that helped me to become more social, to communicate with individuals, to learn how to use my resources. I found that when I was working in a supermarket at a really young age, 12, 13, 14, people would come and ask me questions about how do you get these resources? Um, how do you, what do you think about this daycare center? Because my mom was so involved in a lot of things, naturally they thought that I knew about those things. And that progressed to, in my teenage years, people asking me questions and that progressed to 
working in social services at a really young age. I've been in the field of social services for around 26, 27 years now. And in social services, what we're doing is life coaching. Regardless of what area you're, you're in, mental health, uh, medical, substance abuse, the foundation of it is helping somebody with their life to elevate. So I took those practices and I started doing it in my own business as it relates to helping people, holding them accountable, time management, setting short and long-term goals, and really working to not just say you're going to do it, but really moving through those stages of development to do that. You mentioned YouTube. On my YouTube channel, I speak a lot about short-term goals, long-term goals, accountability, um, partners, time management, all of those things go into life coaching. So that is the beauty of what I do as a life coach. I'm big on holding you accountable. You can't say that you want to do something and then next week say that you're sick. You can't say you want to do something and say you don't feel like it the following week. If we're going to knock out these goals, we're going to knock out these goals. Outcomes are extremely important. I can't hear you. I forgot. There was, there was a <laughs> plane or something, a helicopter going by, so I muted myself. Um, I come to you and I say, you know, darling, I want to move forward in my life. You know, I want to develop personally. Where do you and I start? Like, what would be the starting point for you and I? Like, yeah. what is the roadmap? Mm -hmm. Great question, Stephanie. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. A questionnaire and it's not just five questions it's a slew of questions it's mm -hmm. actually two or three documents because I need to know who you are so I'm asking you questions about your dreams your fears mm -hmm. your um, your endeavors what you've done in the past what you're looking to do in the future your family your children what's important to you I find that if you can't take the time to do that questionnaire I'm, I'm uncertain if we'll be able to move forward mm -hmm. because this is your future. So that's really the first test. If mm -hmm. you can answer those 20, 30 questions and get it back to me in a timely manner, then I'll know the biggest thing is going to be time management. A lot of people, women, get stuck with, um, I don't know what to write. Write from your heart. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a word, two words, three words. I want to know you so that I can help you. So that's where we start at writing. Okay. Okay. Yes. So I want to throw this into the mix. Yes. Yeah. So I come to you. I have a lot of trauma in my life. A lot. Yes. Yeah. That I've experienced since early on. You know, different things. Some of it is complex trauma because I've had more than one thing to happen to me and now i'm presented with a questionnaire asking me what are my goals what are my you know dreams what is it that i want to do and maybe i have never considered that because i never thought that i yes. would reach a place of doing anything for myself never felt deserving never felt like I mattered, never even encountered somebody asking me, what did I think and what did I want? Yeah. So what do you do to move a person through that process? Because we're making the connection between the two, the personal Great development question. and mental health. And, and I believe Great. that some women, what may look like laziness, on on the outside looking in and and i know that you are well able of differentiating between those things you've you've been correct. at this a long correct. time correct you've correct. Been, been at this a long correct. time and i know that you know what it is you're looking at so when you account encounter because that's why the topic is doing it afraid I, yes. i'm coming to you trauma laden but i'm afraid correct Correct. Mm -hmm. Great. You you just threw a whole bunch of stuff out, right? <laughs> Let's tackle the. Clearly, there's um some trauma. Let's tackle that part, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
you are a licensed social worker by profession. Mm -hmm. I am a seasoned social worker, mm -hmm. social service provider more so. Now I am in school for mental health to get to become a licensed mental health mm -hmm. practitioner. That stated, mm -hmm. I there are certain things that I am not comfortable in touching because once you start to unravel those things, mm -hmm. go into those layers, you have to be licensed to handle that trauma. So mm -hmm. what I do is when I see it. I encourage them to seek counseling mm -hmm. as they are doing the life coaching mm -hmm. because you'll get a lot of things that will come up. Um, commonalities are imposter syndrome, uh, them feeling as if they're not worthy enough, them feeling as if they have to um, really put others before them. And it's a, it's, it's a story whereas I had a client and she was afraid to say no when they were asking her to do extra work. She wouldn't get in trouble if she didn't do it. She wasn't being paid to do it. It was just, they were saying, can you do this? But the thing is they were dumping on her a lot. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, now we were working as her life coach. I'm working with you to transition you out of your job. But if you're allowing people to dump things on you, it's gonna seem further and further away, you leaving that mm -hmm. job and focusing on your entrepreneurship. So I asked her, why do you think that you have to always say yes? And she told me, because that's how I was raised. Mm. Because I thought that it's important for me to be polite and always say yes to people. And in that moment, I'm like, that's not true. Like your foundation, your, your thought process of saying no and yes and offending someone, that's deep rooted. That's mm -hmm. not something you can do in life coaching. You have to work that out. So I suggest counseling to individuals like that. Then other individuals who just from the gate are uncomfortable with some of the questions. And I'll get the attitudes. I'll get the <laughs> eye rolling. I'll get the names. And I laugh. <laughs> I get the names. I'm a little short, such and such and such. Leave me alone. I'll get back to it later. And I can be quite like, uh, or a lack of other words, annoying. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this. I'm going to text you. I'm going to call you. I'm going to ask you. So I know the difference. But even with some of them that are avoiding, you have to consider why you're mm -hmm. avoiding it. Mm -hmm. I recommend counseling for everyone. I've been doing counseling for six years. I think counseling is not limited to trauma. Right. It's open to the world. Mm -hmm. But those that have trauma generally I won't deal with them if I see it because they're not ready for that point of accountability. And I never want to make someone feel uncomfortable to the point where they just want to give up more. Right. Right. And I, I think that this is um, an excellent segue into the personal development and how that rolls over into professional development be, based on the example that you just gave. You said that this young lady was like, I don't know how to say no. And you could tell that just work was being dumped on her. So the more that we develop on a personal level, the more we learn how to say no, the more that we learn how to set boundaries. Okay. When we learn where the line in the sand is at so that we don't cross over it and we don't allow others to i think it helps and it, it extends into our professional development and i think at some point we all go through that you know like uh you said oh i that i have the license and you have the ex the experience i went and got a license because that's what I needed to do in order to move on and open doors for me for what exactly. I wanted to do. Yes. Right? But I'll be honest and say that there's a lot I had already learned just from doing the work. Yes. You, you, you know, like when people show up, you already know because you've seen this before. Exactly. And, and you know what works not that you're doing anything cookie cutter but you have an idea of what works what a person needs you begin to get discernment with that be able to you know tap into that so this is how we are able to instruct somebody professionally because for me i thought oh well this person has a degree or has a license so they must you know so it made me fall back like i didn't let my light shine 
based on some letters after yeah. somebody's name. Definitely. Definitely. You know? I definitely agree. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're, so, and you know, in going to, going back to school, and you can probably relate to this as a graduate, the thing becomes, um, I never want to merge the two. I always want to refer out just because of insurances, mm -hmm. the safety issues. So tapping into the mental health piece, I all, I definitely see it like you're saying. I'll see it just like that. But some things I'll say, you know what, have you considered such and such and such? Or I'll provide some interventions, just calling it like coaching and stuff, as opposed to saying mental health or psychological i try to stay away from those type of words because right. i never want to be um looked at as the clinician and that's mm -hmm. just for liability purposes but yeah i definitely mm -hmm. see it. you can see it a mile away as you're saying and even in um what i do you know um thank you for bringing up the importance of language you know even in my sessions i use terms like healing experience love you for that yes. you know yes um expression you know because sometimes people are just not ready for those technical terms for i let you draw that conclusion now if i need to explain a diagnosis that you have and the purpose of the medications in relation to symptom management and you know what this is going to look like for you yeah but just the ongoing therapeutic process i tend to move away from because i want to keep things natural and organic yes yes yes, you know? yes. do you I find don't, your i don't want you to feel like when we're in session we are like this is what we do no i want you to be yourself. So yes. you're you're in the process of healing. You've been hurt. You've been wounded. So now you're gonna heal. How do we go about this? You know, what has your experience been? And I always share with uh participants what you experienced was a feeling thing. It touched your heart, it touched your body. This is what you carry. So we can't heal that through a thought process. What is experience has to be healed in an experience. Mm -hmm. the, yes. the, the two have to touch. They, yes. they have to um, meet. So Agreed. doing it afraid, you know, coming into a process and realizing that if I am not healing myself personally, where I can take it into my professional setting like i have to take charge of my mental health like that is my responsibility mental illness is what the diagnosis states schizophrenia bipolar disorder anxieties those things mental health encompasses so many different things being healthy personally being healthy professionally being healthy as a parent that is what mental health is about. Mental health is extremely broad. So that's why I do it afraid, but take charge of your mental health in whatever area it is that, that you need to do that. People, well, I'm gonna say in the black and brown communities and with women, when you mention mental health, right away we go too crazy. This, this is not, not That's what, what I was saying. gonna ask you. I was going to ask you that, that do you find that they'll say a lot? So what do you say? I'm crazy. Right. Do you think that something's wrong with me? Like that's, I always get that. You think I need to see somebody because something's wrong with me. I'm like, no, no. something's wrong with me. I thought it was wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> I work out my issues every week. Yeah. But it's just to say there is a stigma yes. on mental health mm -hmm. in black and brown communities. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I also talk a lot about um, being the superwoman. Take the cape off. It's not necessary. That has never worked for anyone, you know? Yes. And we, oh, my grandmother did it and, and my mother did this and everything. Yes. 
but I know my mother had some issues. Yes. You know, and, and, and when you get older, you begin to see that. And we don't have to repeat those patterns. Like we have to begin to break those cycles of doing everything for everybody and leaving right. ourselves behind. It's, it's imperative. I am, I'm living that. Uh, 2024 will mark 10 years of my my first book, Not Without a Fight, 10 Ways to Win When It Appears You've Already Lost, on Amazon, right? Put the plug yeah. in. Huh? 10 years later, right? I am now at a, a decade of my life where I am living in my next book. Not Without a Fight based was based on making things happen. Mm -hmm. This next book that I'm living in is about managing once you make. Mm. And what I've learned is that my management is contingent on other factors outside of myself, but it's how I entertain those factors. We forget about ourselves to help so many others, mm -hmm. children, family, and we are responsible for our children. So when I say that, I have an older child. My child is 27, so it's a little mm -hmm. different. We have to manage young children, but our children, our parents, our siblings, sometimes for myself, I like, I have siblings, I'm the eldest, our community, our church events, mm -hmm. our charities, all of these things. And we're forgetting about the most important ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I am in that stage now where it's like, Jesus, I'm living in it, but favor, people say favor is not pretty. Favor hurts. Favor mm -hmm. is pain. Because God has taken me through this season, but it's so painful and I'm seeing where I've gone wrong. I'm purging different things. And these are things that I talk about in my coaching sessions because I'm big on, if I'm going to coach something, I've lived through it. So mm -hmm. really being that superwoman, like you said, and I used to, I felt like it was so cliche. I would hear everybody say, you know, take the cape off, take the cape off. It's a lot of influence, in, um, influencers that say that. And I'm like, ah, oh, they're just bashing black women. <laughs> but it's true. Yes. It's true. And because I had my cape on, I really couldn't understand it. But then when they're like, this cape is heavy. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that's suffering physically, mm -hmm. emotionally, financially. I'm suffering while others are thriving off of my sweat equity, off right. of my finances, off of my getting up and going physical attributes. So yeah, it's really important that we realize we're not superheroes. And I agree because my mother was amazing, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of psychological, physical, and emotional abuse in my home. And that's because she could not handle the pressure of four children at a really young age, just doing what she thought was best, being an amazing mother, an amazing wife of a minister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, our, our cape has always been used as a protective factor. Didn't allow us to feel, didn't, you know, allow us to get in touch with our emotions. And just like with those superheroes who have a cape, it is was used to deflect, you know, things that were thrown at us. And I think that there is oftentimes fear connected with taking the cape off because now I'm exposed. Now you get to see my soft spots. Now you get to see some of the scars and where I've been hit. And then, you know, you become fearful. Are, are you going to poke in that spot? That, that that has been exposed. Now you can see my scar. You see that I've been damaged there. So are you going to go for it? You know, yeah. uh, can I trust you enough to let you see the real me when I, the cape keeps us running from here to there to everywhere and, and not really allowing people to get to know us. Because I'm over here doing this for my children. I'm over here doing this for my grandchildren. I'm over here doing this for my parents. I'm over here working to the bone for the ministry that I'm involved in. I, I'm at home trying to work things out in my marriage. I'm, I'm doing all of these things and wearing myself thin, not saying no to any of it. And this
this is how I protect myself in Correct. this because all Correct. people can see is the business. Ooh, Stephanie's strong. Yeah. Ooh, Stephanie got it together. <laughs> Stephanie doing her thing. Ooh, Stephanie is powerful. And Stephanie dying. That's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Stephanie I wish I had dying. your energy. <laughs> <laughs> no. That I have that energy because I'm running from myself. Yeah. And people don't yep. even realize that, yep. that that's what I'm doing. I'm running from myself. You just just hit it. You just hit it. That's exactly what it is. Running from yourself and not knowing yourself, not knowing who you are at mm -hmm. all. Like you sit down with these. So to your question earlier about when we get, when I do the life coaching and we are presented with these questions and it's hard and the layers and stuff, I find that the super women, they are the ones that are so Oh, that that wall is up. Like mm -hmm. you said, it's deflecting. They do not want to let you in. Mm -hmm. They don't. So it's like, okay, you're a lawyer. You're a doctor. You're a teacher. You're the president of this committee. You're this, you're that. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. And they can't answer that question and they get offended. I will say it was a time mm -hmm. I couldn't answer that mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. I'm still exploring that question. I just said today, where do I see myself as an African-American single woman about to be 48 years old? Where do I see myself and am I giving myself limits? I shouldn't. It's just me and my pets. I can mm -hmm. go to Africa and live if I wanted to. South Pole, North Pole, wherever I wanted. There are no limits. Only limitations are the ones I put on myself. Mm -hmm. So when you ask them, you know, who are you? Where do you see yourself? What do you want to do? The outside of their occupations and their commitments, they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. They are stuff. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. We, we we confuse with who am I with what do I do? Yes. Like I, I can give you a list of what I do yes. and yes. do it well. Yes. But don't ask yes. me, who am I? What, what makes me tick? what makes stephanie stephanie you had to sit back and think about that but ask me what i do and i'm gonna rattle it off you know like this g yeah. g give you you know everything but that is yeah. not who we are and right. this is not what we are attempting to aspire to we are trying to peel that onion back take the mask off and be who it is that we are and i think that a wonderful way of doing that is through personal and professional development and being involved in non-traditional uh services mental health services such as nair's house like yeah. nair's house is just the bridge between saying you know what i want to thank everybody who is just now joining in thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening to spend time with us i am here this evening with darlene a anderson who is a personal and professional development consultant she's the person that you go to when you are trying to figure things out you know like i'm feeling a little better i think i'm about well on my way what is it that I do now? And Darlene will walk you uh, through that process, you know, through a mentoring and coaching process. Okay. So with Nair's house, you know, we are the bridge between, okay, so I recognize that there is something going on with me, but I'm not necessarily ready to do one-on-one -on -one talk therapy or be involved in a group because I still come from the background of what happens in this house stays in, the, in this house. All right. So I'm still not good with talking about me, talking about what my challenges have been and are. Uh, I'm still not sure if I can trust women, you know, to hold sacred the, the things that I need to talk about. This is a challenge for us in our communities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can go back into, you know, history with colorism and who has straight hair, who has curly hair, who's light skin, who's dark skin. We, we've been fighting with that for generations. Yes. 
And yes. it's still prevalent today. It's Absolutely. not like it has gone Absolutely. away. Absolutely. So yes. Nine Years House is where you can start, where we are using non-traditional therapies. In our first workshop that we had back in June, we had a demonstration of drumming and where drumming comes from and having the room to be quiet so as the drummer drums, you could connect your own heartbeat, your own in a rhythm to the drum yeah. and begin to speak to yourself inwardly. We, you know, uh, did some poetry. We had somebody do spoken word because what we can't sit in a circle or one-on-one -on -one and say, I can do spoken word and, and tell you exactly where I'm coming from and what my experience is and has been. Those are natural things for us. And yeah. you know that movement has always been a part of who we are. It's in our DNA, you know, to move. And I'm not necessarily talking about dancing. I'm talking about movement, the release of holding on to hurt, pain, sadness, in our bodies correct you know that, that, that that's where that's where we hold it you know that's why sometimes my shoulders is way up here right beneath my ears because i'm stressed out i'm just, and, and i'm like this all the time just tense and 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 holding it it's, it's why i have pain in my back just holding yeah. on to is why my mm. stomach hurts you know yeah. be, be, because i want to say things and i'm afraid and i don't trust my own voice so movement is what we use to release ourselves from right. all of that to all free right. ourselves mm -hmm. and hopefully through this process of getting our voices back releasing some of that stuff that we hold on to and just making the connection of providing a held safe space for women to Correct. get together Correct. and and talk and share some stuff and you know it's through storytelling that i can get to sit back as you tell your story and then say to myself you know what it's not just me i'm not alone in this you know someone else has felt the same things that i have felt because it's not so much about connecting the story but connecting the emotion that is attached exactly. to the story exactly. Exactly. that that is what um we get to and i'm telling you i was amazed at the first workshop because women so readily was talking and yes. sharing and i mean really freeing themselves that i didn't think that yes. a group of women who didn't necessarily know each other would share to yes. that depth but it's Correct. just letting me know that it's our time we uh, are 100 ready Correct. yes yes we just yes. need the yes. space we need this space you so you mentioned two things right the first is the group of women i i'm very social i'm very outgoing i'm a networker i'm a personality <laughs> i'm all of these things but i'm kind of um an introvert at the same time i'm kind of withdrawn and a lot of it has to do with like you said going back living in the inner city dealing with females cattiness jealousy all of that stuff but then i had some amazing friends as well but we carry those things into our adult life it's like i don't trust females mm -hmm. i don't want to be with a group of females i don't need any more friends if you're not a friend from my childhood or somebody really close from work i don't need any more friends but i was actually challenged last year to participate in a church event for my pastor darius daniels changed church in in um in you in uh new jersey mm -hmm we did a group for his book and it was a group of women and speaking to what you said like as a collective these women none of us knew each other black brown white short hair curly hair different mm -hmm. sizes and we came in and we shared stories one of the premises of the book was just really understanding who you are where you came from developmentally amazing book uh, your purpose is calling and that book really engaged us like coming together and just sharing and the trust and the secrets and the storytelling mm -hmm. it was so healing 
And a lot of women aren't doing that today because they are afraid. So what you're speaking about, Nair's house, is really true. They need mm -hmm. that. The mm -hmm. other thing was when you mentioned carrying your pain. I was just speaking to my sister a couple of months ago. And as I stated, we uh, come from a very loving household, but my home was like that of a roller coaster up and down. My mother did suffer from mental illness. She was never diagnosed until much later on in life. And praise God, we're able to manage that now in her older years as she's experiencing Alzheimer's. But growing up, my mother's way of dealing with her trauma was literally on a Sunday morning when my dad didn't come home, she would get up, get upset, and bust the door open, and we would jump up. Me and my sister would jump up all the time. She's like, get up, wash these dishes, do this, do that. She was angry because he wasn't coming home. To this very day, at 47 years of age, soon to be 48, if somebody opens a door, I jump up ready to fight, yelling and screaming. And I was speaking to my sister about it, and she said she could relate to it because she felt the same way. And she's two years younger than me. So dealing with that and not even knowing and being able to identify, it took going to mental health counseling for me to say, okay, this is what happened. This is why I'm always on edge. Mm -hmm. I'm always moving. I can't stay still. I sit sometimes, and I'm like, wow, this is what it feels like to be still. This is what it feels like not to be anxious. Mm -hmm. This is what it feels like not to think that something is going to happen just like that. But I had to understand how my mind was wired to feel like something was going to happen. Right. Like you're always waiting for the ball to drop. Mm -hmm. That her coming in, always banging the door. I always felt like, all right, she's going to come in the room right now. Mm -hmm. So I really had to work through that. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I want to thank everyone who... Uh, has joined in thus far. We are we're talking about doing it afraid, taking charge of your mental health and how mental health impacts our personal and professional development. We have with us this evening, Darlene A. Anderson, who is a personal and professional development consultant. So, if you have any questions, please put them uh, in the chat and um, either Darlene or myself will do the best that we can to uh, answer the question. But um, don't hold back. Join, you know, join in. Join in. Uh, Darlene can be found on instagram at darlene a anderson and you can let us know what your youtube is uh yeah. darling let's talk some more about that yes and, and, and what that is about mm -hmm. definitely it's darlene a anderson on youtube and you will go and you will find we have videos dating back from 10 12 years of uh, you will also find it under darlene's utopia I used to do amazing conferences on relationships, DU's conversation series. We're going to be rearing that up again in the upcoming year or two. But DU's conversation series was events where we brought men and women together. We had professionals such as um, we had clergy, we had uh, sex therapists. We had anybody that dealt with people and relationships. We had authors, and we would just come in and talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of relationships. I really like those conferences, and I'm looking forward to doing them again. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of clips, a lot of amazing people. You may see some influencers that are doing big things now. Uh, Shawnee Vincent Gibson, Robin St. Clair, um, even Ash Cash who uh, has his own segment on Earn Your Leisure. Ash Cash actually was one of our favorites. Um, Oliver T. Reed, just great conversations with men and women, whether you're uh, single, married, divorced. It didn't matter if you were heterosexual, um, in an alternative lifestyle, all were welcome. So we have that. Uh, the Making of Moguls, which were entrepreneurship conferences where we came together and provided a lot of resources for uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners, accounting services, marketing, um, strategy, all of those great things. Uh, law, legal services are really important mm -hmm. as a business owner. Um, now, 
Now I have things more dedicated to personal and professional development coaching. So you can see those old clips, but what you will see of recent is uh, Motivational Mondays, mm -hmm. where I'm coming and discussing various topics of, of mm -hmm. motivation. Uh, Work Wednesday, which is more oriented on what we were talking about before, short and long-term planning, um, having your, your goals, your objectives, your tasks, your outcomes, what does that look like, structure. You have to have structure as you're moving forward in your goals. So I help to provide those stru that structure through my YouTube, but also in my coaching as mm -hmm. well. And then it's Focus Friday, where we're saying, all right, look, we need you to focus, get ready for the next week. Here are some things to take into consideration. Right. Oh, wonderful. Motivational Monday. You said Work Wednesday. Yes. And, and, and focus, focus Friday. And Focus Friday. It doesn't yes. get any yes. better than that. And all of this <laughs> relates to mental health, which is our mental wellness. Exactly. So Monday we get motivated because who knows what your weekend entailed so you know and sometimes on a monday we need to get that motivation back okay that happened over the weekend whether it was a good time a fair time or a bad time we need to get a grip again and motivate ourselves on uh monday wednesday you know it's hump day this is work wednesday you know, come on. What what what's the goal? What did we set exactly. out to do? Let's, exactly. Let's stick with that. Let, let's not, you know, get off the beaten path for that. And then focus Friday. You know, this is what happened from Monday until today. This is an area that I need to improve in. This is a, I can give myself a pat on the back that I did very well in this area where I didn't do very well in this area last week and begin to focus on the upcoming week. Exactly. All of it ties into mental health, mental wellness. Definitely. 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 Right? So again, I want to remind everyone about Nair's house. We are a faith-based, grassroots, culturally sensitive alternative to traditional mental health services. We provide non-traditional mental health therapies and support for Black women in underserved communities. And we are hosting our next interactive workshop on October 7th. The tickets are available on Eventbrite. The link is in my bio. You can DM me for further information or if you need any assistance with um, purchasing a ticket. Would love, love, love to have you share in this experience that we do get better. We can yes. heal. And we are going to stomp right into the ground that notion that women cannot get along with other women. It's a lie. It's what we've been told. It is what we've gone into some circles expecting that. So that's the energy we put out. So that's the energy that we received. Exactly. Everything has not always been someone else's fault. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's the energy that we put out. So come and join us. Have a wonderful time. Uh, Darlene, if you have any last words of wisdom for us, give us your IG handle again, your YouTube <laughs> handle again, so that we don't miss anything. We want to make sure that people know that Darling A. Anderson is out there. And I want to encourage folks, don't just go look at the page on IG, follow darling hit the follow yeah. button on youtube subscribe subscribe when you go to the you youtube page Th that is what we all need not just for you to say hey girl like <laughs> i like it too that's why i put it out there follow yes. me follow darling subscribe to her youtube page so that we can all grow the more that darlene grows the more that she's able to help your sister your daughter your auntie your mother 
when we heal, we get the opportunity to heal a community. That is just how powerful women are. Definitely. We get to heal an entire community. We get to heal the next generation. So Darlene, let us know where we can find you. Definitely. I wanted to say, um, you mentioned if there's any words, mm -hmm. just going back to the purpose, like what you put, and I loved it, doing it afraid. Like that's been my entire life. Like God is just, that's my superpower, courage. Just rising up despite being afraid and jumping into it. Even if I don't know what I'm doing, I learn along the way and trust that God will bring support in it like I trust that God will always make a way and I say God because I am a Christian woman um, so for me it is my Lord and Savior I believe that if I take one foot God will take all of the others and he will carry me when need be so even if you're afraid it's no excuse to not do it it's just an emotion it has nothing to do with the goal so please do it afraid um, as she stated, you can find me at uh, on IG, Darlene A. Anderson. I am on uh, Facebook, Darlene A. Anderson. YouTube, Darlene A. Anderson. Earlier on, I did mention about self-direction and being an independent contractor for the Office of People with Developmental Disabilities. I have a second YouTube page that is Empower Movements with Darlene A. Anderson. There you can learn more about um, OPWDD with me as a self-direction broker in the state of New York. And again, I share that because it's important for the community to understand these resources are available for the developmentally disabled. So there you have it. Darling, the title of the book again and where we can yes. find it? Not Without a Fight, 10 Ways to Win When It Appears You've Already Lost. And it is on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. We are approaching 10 years. I am presently pinning my next book um, to celebrate those 10 years. And it's going to be a doozy because so much has happened within the past 10 years. But it is Not Without a Fight, 10 Ways to Win When It Appears You've Already Lost. Okay. I want to thank everyone who has joined in. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. Darlene, thank you. for saying yes, for joining me um, this evening. And this is just the first of many more lives yes. that you and I are going to do together. We this are, is my we... first IG oh. ever, ever. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> but we, we are yes. going to get together and come up with some topics, come up with some things that are relevant to our community and relevant to the growth, you know, uh, of other women. I, I know that this is what I'm passionate about. Like you've said earlier, we've known each other for years, that you are passionate about these things also. So that is definitely what the connection is for us.